What is up, More Than Fitness family? I'm your host, Adrian Conway, and in today's episode, you are going to listen to Alex Gazan. She is a very young, up-and-coming CrossFit Games contender who actually punched her rookie ticket and rookie debut last year in 2022. Now, Alex is under the tutelage and is an athlete um, for Justin Kotler out of Underdogs Athletics. And in this episode, we we get into the discussion of how this all began for her. Where did she begin to CrossFit? Why did she start it? And how did she end up in Las Vegas, Nevada, surrounded by some of the fittest women in our sport? And of course, in a very competitive area and with one of the most renowned coaches in our space currently today. You'll love the story. I think you'll be very surprised at how it actually began because it certainly surprised me. Alex also talks about and discusses the way that she tries her best to balance not just being a professional CrossFitter, but actually still balancing life and even a bit of a coaching career that she still clings to even as she pursues uh, competition at an extremely high level. There's a lot of value here in understanding the importance of balance in one's life how she perceives it as a way to almost guard her psychological and emotional tolerances with competing and still have other people to invest in in her own personal life. She talks about being a young married athlete and how this also affects even her marriage and the way that they must utilize teamwork in order for her to be as successful as she wants to be. I've talked long enough. You guys are excited. I'm excited to present it to you. Here is our episode with Alex Gazan. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of More Than Fitness. I'm joined here by Alex Gazan. Alex, how are you this morning? I am well. How are you? I'm doing really well. Um, I know we had some small talk before we actually got live on the microphones, and uh, you were alluding that it's a very beautiful day down there in Vegas. And um, yes. I'm, I'm experiencing a lot of, yeah, I do see. I do see your beautiful sunshine, and, you know, it looks like a very awesome way to start a, a, a rest day or we'll get into exactly what kind of rest day it is here in a little bit for you. Um, but I'm up here in Salt Lake City, and it is snowing like crazy. Um, and I, in my opinion, it has no business doing such because yesterday I was wearing shorts. But that is that is how spring goes uh, in this neck of the woods. Um, but you you did allude to in, in previous conversation as well that today's a rest day for you. Um, what kind of rest day is it again? A fake rest day. <laughs> it's a fake uh, rest day. What does that mean? Fake rest day. Uh, we just do a lot of like uh, aerobic work or like pool work. So I'll have a swim session and then like a little over an hour on the C2 bike. So as you said, nothing destructive, just it's not rest. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. And, 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 you know, of course, we, we love to, you know, active rest is something that's extremely popular within our community. Um, and it's certainly a fine line between active rest and like real training, right? Um, for you as a very focused athlete, like this is just a part of the grind for you. Um, do you feel better coming off a day like a fake rest day? Or do you feel better coming off a day like complete rest? Um, That's a good question. I think it just depends. Like, uh last week the swim session wasn't so long and so it felt okay to do with the bike and i felt good going into friday um if i'm really trash and just more me honestly it's more of the mental side for me like my body will usually be fine like I, I recover pretty quickly um but for me it's like having that mental break of like not having to do xyz or not having to hit this pace or that so kind of just depends for me um I would say most of the time I feel really good going into Friday, but uh, yeah, it just depends on how hard the first two days were. Oh, no, no doubt about that. And, and you know, as, as a coach and as a competitor myself, I definitely recognize the, uh, the implications or the effects of DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, where it's like, yeah, cool, we rested on Thursday or we did a fake rest day on Thursday, but I'm actually still just creeping in the soreness from Wednesday and the squatting and the pulling and all the other fun stuff that I experienced. So I, I, I completely understand how that goes. Now we're, we're into, I would say we're into, you know, or approaching close to like what we would categorize as the midpoint of our competition season for 2023. Um, how do you feel physically and mentally at this point in the year? Um. I'm really happy. I feel like I finally turned a corner. I was dealing with like some nagging, like I had a hip thing and a wrist thing. And I'm sure all athletes understand. There's just like 
there's always something. And I feel like this season more than any, just being so excited and probably hammering down a little bit more. Like I've um, accumulated more tweaks and things than I had sure. in any years past. And um, I feel like I finally rounded the corner with those and I'm able to like do everything now, which is really nice. And like my legs are back under me after like taking some time off squatting after Wadapalooza. And, um, it just, I feel finally like at a good place where now I'm like continuing to go up instead of like one step forward and step back, a step forward and step back. Um, mentally, I feel really good. Uh, we've been trainings ramping up. So harder workouts, more workouts. Um, and that always like just builds your mental confidence along the way. So I'd say I'm feeling pretty good for halfway through. <laughs> Yeah. Would, would you say that, that you're relieved to kind of have the opening quarterfinals concluded at this point? Like, is this more of your, your jam leading into a semis and the preparation for semis? Yeah. Um, the opening quarters, I feel like for myself, I don't feel a lot of weight to it. Like, I'm not like, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh, the open, like I got to freak out and do X, Y, Z and, um, quarters, obviously, like, there is a leaderboard and you want to do well on the leaderboard, but at the same time, like as long as you make it from point A to point B, like there's no advantage other than your seed. Like obviously you want to be seated in the top heat based off your leaderboard placement, but really there's not like, especially with quarterfinals, there's no money. There's no recognition necessarily for placing mm -hmm. a certain amount. So um, making sure you're just like in a good place, like doing the workouts, you feel good about your fitness. Like you don't like tank anything. Um, so now like, I'm more excited for semis. Like I like, I like the higher skill, harder workouts. So, yeah. And I've always been a big fan of the in-person competing, you know, getting an audience, getting the vibes, getting, getting even to look other competitors in the eyes in the warm up area and then the corrals. Oh. Is, is that something that you look forward to? Yes and no. Um, I'm a very like even keel competitor. So like my attitude like in the gym is pretty similar to when I compete and so for me like when there's girls that are just like stone cold killer like I'm not talking to you I'm gonna tell you I feel great when I feel like shit like that's hard for me um because I'm not like that mm -hmm. but um I do like I love in-person competing and there's obviously a lot of great women and like really nice competitors that you have fun with but there's also just like an atmosphere of like we're all trying to like win or do well. And that's sometimes a little bit intimidating, you know, and, and I appreciate you bringing that up because I think it's a very real and honest perception of, you know, the in-person competitive environment that exists within our sport. It's like, we're, we're kind of unique in a way that we, we have really great and sometimes very deep friendships within our community of competitors. Like you could be literally competing against your best friend or one of your best friends that either you train with on a regular basis or that you see a, a ton of. Um, and then of course, on the other hand, there could be some other girls that maybe more have this kind of deferred uh, relationship with most other competitors where they're like, ah, they shut themselves off. They don't really talk. And then you're like, okay, how do I handle this? looming quietness that exists here it's kind of awkward um but it, it's it's something that's very real and you learn to deal with it um in your own way as you continue to mature as a competitor um but it also kind of brings me to another question to you is like the atmosphere at underdogs right now because of course that's where you train you're an athlete under justin kotler out there like what's the atmosphere for the other athletes leading into semis do you see some of them are becoming a little bit more stressed and on edge and others are like ah yeah it's just training like any oh. other day I haven't noticed any shift really since um, the open, other than our training, maybe changing a little bit. Um, but I feel like everyone is pretty even keel, actually, which is really nice. Um, Kyra is competing on a team. So I think like, the, and Elena is injured at the moment. So she's wasn't able to complete quarterfinals. Right. So really, um, as far as like individual women going to semis, that's going to be me, um, scuds. And then I don't know if you're familiar with Carson, but she punched her ticket. Uh, she's new to underdogs. She's 20. Um, so I think I don't want to miss anyone, but I think that's just us three that have made it to semis. So I think there's like a, if all of us were, so that's, that would have been like five or six of us. I sure. think maybe we would also be like, that's six of us and there's 10 spots and like yeah. maybe would have started to feel a little more, but I think with there just being three of us and 
um, honestly, everyone's super sweet and cares about each other's success anyway, that, um, it just feels really normal. Like we're all just training, trying to get better. And, um, something I really appreciate is like, we'll all have bad days and everyone's so supportive of that. Like, it's okay. Like, let's just get through this workout. Like we feel like shit, but like keep moving. And whether you win the workout by two minutes or lose by three or Mm. whatever it is, like no one's holding that over you or no one's like, Oh, I beat her by two minutes. So I'm better than her. Like, it's not like that. And um, that's something I really appreciate about our little group. Yeah. Do you, do you find it that you really enjoy that group atmosphere versus perhaps training alone all the time? I mean, of course, within our sport, we've got kind of polarizing approaches. We've got people that they're like, I swear I cannot train by myself. And then there's others that are like, Oh my gosh, like it's the only way I want to train, get everyone else away from me. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, we do our monostructural sessions alone. Usually some people might meet up and do that. Um, but I usually do mine alone in the garage. Um, for me, I think it just depends like on what I'm doing. If it's something that I'm not going to necessarily get a push by someone going faster or slower than me, um, because it's all based on my own capability, then I'm kind of indifferent. But like when you're tired and sore and like, don't want to do things, there's something to be said about being with people who are also tired and sore and don't want to do things. And, um, Usually nine out of 10 times you lift each other up and you get it done. Maybe 10, one out of those 10, you're like, oh my gosh, we're both so tired and you kind of slog it. But I feel like leaning on each other as a group can be really helpful. Um, I I love training with other people. I trained a little bit alone during 2020 and mm-hmm. it took the joy out of it for me. Like it's not fun. So I, yeah. yeah. And I, and I, I, I agree with, with both you know, uh, preferences. And I really think that it sounds like what you've created and and what's going on there is a really healthy balance. Um, you know, it seems as though for me, I always preferred to do some of my training alone, but if a few times a week I had an opportunity to get with a crew and a group and be pushed, like you mentioned, when you're kind of at your physical limitations, like at your ends of being sore or fatigued, then there's a ton of value there. And it's, it's ironic too, because of course you, you mentioning that Alex is that, um, you know, CrossFit was based around communities and there's mm-hmm. a reason for that. You know, it was an opportunity for us to take off our headphones in the global gym by ourselves and look to our left and our right and like be in this team based atmosphere where it's like, you know, John is really going crazy hard today and I didn't want to at all, but I'm going to go hard just because John's going hard. So yeah. I, I love that you guys have that environment there, even as competitors, because I think it's, it's certainly important. Um, And your environment is like clearly going to be something that's important for you, even as you continue to advance through our sport. Totally. Tell us a little bit about your background in CrossFit and actually what brought you to underdog athletics to begin with and how this competitive journey began. Yeah. um, I started CrossFit the end of 2017, um, like that November, December. Um, I just came across it through my high school PE teacher, she essentially like blind date set me up with the um, affiliate owners back home and um, they kind of took me in and said start taking classes and I really loved it and then once I found out there was like a competitive side to it, I was like really hooked just because I grew up playing sports and um, always was a competitive athlete and um, at that time I did like a weightlifting class and I really enjoyed it so like this was like a perfect uh, blend of like all the things I love to do in fitness and it was just all together. And, um, so I started doing it pretty regularly, found out I could compete as a teenager and was like, I'm just going to go for it. So I got really invested, um, that year and, um, kind of just kept going. I eventually aged out of the teen division like a year and a half later. And, um, I still wanted to compete and that like drive wasn't gone. So, Um, I just decided to take my time and eventually like hopefully crack open to the big dogs. And, um, I met my husband through the gym and, uh, he ended up having to move to Vegas with his family. And this was like right around 2020. And I did not want to move actually at all. I had a pretty good setup back home. Uh, I had some really good training partners, like, um, just a really high caliber like environment and I had a good job, like school, everything was kind of like going good. And, Um, but I took a leap of faith and moved here with him and for a while just trained alone, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the gym. Um, I ended up finding a place to work at Camp Rhino, which is an affiliate here. And, um, 
met a few friends, started working out with them, and that was really fun. Just to, like, I they followed Forged by Zeus, I think, at the time. Okay. Um, and so I just hopped into that with them, and then all of a sudden, like Carrie and those guys moved here, and I was like, wow, like that's kind of cool. But I was in no um, capacity to like go introduce myself. Uh, I just kind of kept training uh, with everyone else, and then one of my friends pretty much like was like, you need to go train with them, and gave me like a mutual friend contact to reach out to and I ended up going there for a couple times working out with Carrie and I met Justin and it was kind of a slow process like I just went and worked out a couple times here and there and then after semifinals that year I just reached out to Justin and was like hey would you be willing to take me on and it was really intimidating because he was like I can't right now let's talk after the season and I was like okay (laughs) which like in hindsight he was just being respectful to the athletes like that he was currently coaching and I respect that. I just also didn't quite like get it at the time. And I was like, Oh no, he doesn't want to work with me. Um, but we had that conversation after the 2020 games and, um, Oh no, sorry. 2021. Um, and been working out with them and here we are. All right. And Alex, you mentioned that it was, it was quite a, a slow play in regards to your relationship. Um, like actually picking up and, and having Justin as a coach. And I think there's a really cool thing there where it's, um, you know, it's, it's organic. And I, I don't know that that's how many relationships in today's sport as it continues to evolve begin. And I say that because there's a lot of times where I've seen this happen with teens that are coming up through the, the group, the age groups, and they're competing at a high level. It's almost like this free agency type experience for some of them where they're like, Oh, what camp do I want to go be a part of? And where do I want to, you know, start my career, which coach is going to take me the furthest. What about social media? There's all these things now that exist. And for you, it just seemed kind of natural, organic. Would you say that that was a positive part of your experience in becoming an athlete under Justin? Yeah. Um, I think something that like I really valued just like with my whole journey is just not forcing or rushing anything really. Like um, when I was trying to make it as a teenager at the time, I didn't really have, um, I guess the, I didn't have the understanding of how much went into making the CrossFit games. Like I just started CrossFit and I was like, yeah, I'm going to like go for this. And um, I wasn't doing double sessions. I wasn't doing monostructural sessions. I was just going like, I would do a couple hours of training like with some of the coaches and then maybe class here or there, but like I wasn't on a structured program. Um, I definitely probably cherry picked a lot more than like I understood. (laughs) Um, but like coming so close and not making it like that whole time that I was trying, like everyone told me that like don't like making it as a teenager is cool and all, but like think bigger because like you can and like not to discredit the teenage division, like it's awesome, but it's not like a make or break. Like if you make it as a teenager, your life isn't probably going to change tenfold, um, unless you're like a Mal or a Haley that. Mm. as a teenager and makes it to the adult side but um like just to make it as a teenager it's a great accomplishment but you don't get like the um I guess the hype maybe that the individuals get and um so I just kind of like had that in my back pocket and it gave me the freedom of not having a timeline so I started trying as an individual and whether that was going to happen I didn't even think it was going to happen last year but whether it happened last year or like two years from now like I was okay with that and okay with like taking my time with it. That's awesome. I I love that. And I think it, it, it's, it's going to pay off for you in your career as you continue to execute, you know, um, and have your focus be on the day to day versus one year timeframes where a lot of people just become enamored and way too focused on that small thing at the end of that blip of what becomes a CrossFit games for us. And then they make it much bigger, um in value in their life then they probably should yeah uh, and i say that because i do understand the full commitment and the absolute style of lifestyle that is necessary in order to to make it to the crossfit games and be successful there but also um it's a very fine line between guarding your heart and understanding that like the beauty is really in the journey and if you allow that to happen then of course you know the payoff can be really big at the end now i mentioned this lifestyle as a big part of it um how, how do you, what's an example of like a day-to-day for you currently at this stage of your career? 
Yeah. Um, I'll just give you like yesterday as an example. Um, woke up, did my running piece. Um, I actually had a PT appointment in the morning, so I went and did that. Go to the gym, finish up training. Um, I have a little membership at this place that has like sauna, ice bath, like that kind of thing. And so went there after training. Um, then I still coach. So I went and I had a couple hours of work to do. Um, did that, came home. And then I just binge some gossip girl. <laughs> there you go. Go to bed. Um, so really like my days just consist of training, eating, coaching, and uh, when I'm not doing those things, just chilling, nothing really exciting. Yeah. It, w when it comes to coaching, um, are you coaching just traditional CrossFit classes? Uh, I coach a kid's class. So I have kids that are like anywhere from six to like 11 and um, it's, it's a lot sometimes, <laughs> um, but I really like it. Uh, I wish that all kids had access to like fitness. So it's something I'm passionate about. And uh, then I have some like PT clients. So just one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one. Okay. And how long have you done like CrossFit kids or, or coaching kids um, through the gym? I started coaching when I turned 18 back in Oregon. Um, I coached a kid's class and it was kind of like my way of fi finally giving back to the gym. Um, they had took me in when I was 16 and they didn't make me pay and um, they just kind of gave me that opportunity. So I in turn then started coaching a kid's class where they could come for free and they just had to do some form of like community service. So whether that was um, go picking up trash or whatever thing they chose, um, it was a really cool thing. And I kind of just realized I really liked working with kids and it stuck. That's really cool. Do you find that it creates balance for you within, you know, you've got this lifestyle where a lot of your focus and your personal effort is toward your own development uh, your commitment to excellence in the gym and your training so you can perform. Do you find that being able to focus on the kids or even some PT clients on the side, does that create a, a better balance for you? Yeah. Um, obviously sometimes if you're tired, like it's not ideal, like you just want to be relaxing, but I think there's something to be said about, as you mentioned earlier, like the community. And um, if you're in it alone and you don't have a community of people and you don't have things outside of CrossFit to fulfill you, um, it doesn't really mean much. Like if you were to get hurt and then your career is over and you all of a sudden you're like, Oh wait, I don't have friends outside of this. I don't have mm -hmm. a place to go or people that care about me outside of CrossFit. And, um, so I think it's really important to have that. And whether that's coaching for you or like going to a cooking class or I don't know, just like something that people enjoy outside is really important. Um, it helps kind of distract me too. Like I'm thinking about other people and not myself and that adds some good value for me. Yeah. yeah. And, and I know that even, you know, pursuing the sport at a high level, it takes a team. Um, you of course, meeting your husband within the CrossFit community, uh, there at the gym, of course, he's been a part of this journey with you from, from day one for the most part. And so, um, how do you guys balance your lifestyle together? Uh, with you being so busy and him obviously having a career himself what's that look like in your day-to-day -day? um it's not easy like I definitely won't lie like we've done a really good job of communicating through it but like it's like a different kind of sacrifice because you can't mm. like on my end I can't just go on a hike with him on a rest day because I'm tired and I can't expend I mean, I could, but it just wouldn't be smart. Like I can't expend that mm -hmm. energy here. We can't go out on a, like a eight o'clock date night because even if you stay up late one night, usually that affects like three nights of sleep and your schedule is a lot of whack. And, um, I don't like to rough house cause I'm afraid of getting hurt. And like, there definitely are things on my end that like, I really appreciate him understanding and, um, it like, it's hard. So I feel like we've done a good job of at least like communicating through it and just understanding that like, I'm not going to be competing forever. And like in 10 years, we can screw up our sleep schedules and like do all this stuff. But um, he's really understanding and super supportive. And um, right now he's working in California. So I guess it's like kind of good timing. He goes and does his fire prevention um, usually from about this time of year through the game. So at least like when I'm in peak training, like, 
that's when he's gone and um it kind of works out time wise for us yeah and and i think it's you know this will always be the case but couples all deal with it in different ways but i think you mentioned what's most important and you said we communicate through it um you know and you guys are you guys are both pretty young uh in regards to like worldly age and even your you know your your marriage the time that you've been married so it's like it's you'll always continue to learn that as i am today uh, my wife and i just you know we're amid start 10 years of marriage and it's like we we continue to learn that but communication is um the, the key to all kinds of good success so we're, we're in this we're in this lifestyle topic for you and i kind of want to stay here for a second because there's you know you mentioned that you're still coaching um you're doing other things you got pt clients uh you know a lot of competitors are in this sport at, at the level that you're at and they're already committed to full time all i do is train right like this is all i focus on i don't have to worry about being tired you know i just go home and I rest because I don't do anything except focus on my recovery when I'm not in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, and partnerships and sponsorships all play a key role in this and like opportunities. What has the last year been like for you in regards to navigating the waters with opportunities like that and learning this, the business side of this lifestyle? Yeah. Um, it's really interesting. I've like gotten to meet a few athletes in other sports lately. Like there's a few um, NFL players and hockey players that go to that recovery area that I mentioned earlier. And, um, it's really interesting because for them, they might be like one of the least important people on the team or like no one knows, but they have so much money and like, they're just like yep. rolling in it. And it's interesting because CrossFit's not like that. Um, unless you're the best of the best, you rely on your sponsors for that. Um, and, up until this year, I didn't have any like financial sponsors really. Like I had some help with like travel stipends for semifinals and the games, but um, as far as like a monthly paycheck, that was not something I had. And so I did have to coach. Like that was something that um, it wasn't really a choice because I needed some extra income. And um, now uh, I definitely don't want to like exaggerate. I don't coach as much as I used to. It's sure. definitely yep. like just a couple hours here or there, definitely not like a every night kind of thing. Um, I have been able to accumulate a couple of sponsors, which has been super helpful and awesome. And um, I work with Benji through uh, Strength in Numbers and they've been super helpful in navigating that for me. Um, but it's hard, like, and it's also, I think something that's scary is it's a short window of time to have earning opportunity in the sport. Um, Cause like, it's a lot based off your social media and like, you're only going to have that specific platform for so long. And, um, I don't know. It's interesting. I'm still learning, navigating it. Um, thankful for the sponsors I do have right now. And, um, now I'm just trying to learn how to make the most of that for a while last. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting that you say you're just learning because I've been in the game for a while and I'm just learning myself and I've gotten to dabble in both sides. I've gotten to be one that oper that creates opportunities for athletes to be sponsored and figuring out, okay, how do we navigate this relationship? How's it fruitful for both parties? Um, and, and what all that looks like. And I think we'll all still be learning from, for some time still within our sport um, and, and learning a lot probably from other sports as well and how to navigate relationships such as these and what it looks like for a sport like CrossFit, but we're certainly trending in a really great way. And I think there's a lot of athletes and a lot like yourself that are finding more freedom in their training because of support and opportunities that will present themselves down the road. Um, you know, it's interesting because I remember meeting you uh, last year for the first time at, at Granite Games. I think it was. Um, I had an athlete there uh, that was getting ready to compete on the male side. And it was actually the first time that I'd met Justin in person, not the first time that we'd spoken to one another, but we're, we're chopping it up. Big fan of Justin love to love his energy, love the way that he tends to, or it seems to uh, be able to empathize and create relationships with his athletes. And of course, you know, the way that athletes speak of him, I was very, very high in regards to how they feel not just developed from a physicality side but also kind of nurtured from that psychological and even emotional side too and i think that's that's huge but i say all that because i remember him being so fired up about you and your potential like we're we're so we're like we're just you know we're getting to know each other we're, we're having some side conversations that you might have been warming up or something i'm not even 100 sure but he's like hey listen 
Adrian, I got to tell you, this girl right here, over here, like she could, she could do some things. And I was like, oh, really? Huh? She could, she could do some things. Like, tell what do you, what do you, what are you thinking? What are you saying? And she's like, I, you know, she's she could she's gonna go to the games this year. She has the capacity. She's gonna learn how to do some things. She's gonna, she she's got the skill set and the, and the ability to to be a, a face and a name within our sport. And I was like, okay. Well, let me, let me pay a little bit closer attention here throughout the course of this weekend. That was and I had an opportunity. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that sound, if that doesn't sound like Justin, I don't know. <laughs> Des, that's so good. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I hadn't, I hadn't practiced at all and it's been a long time since we've spoken, but um, he, uh, he was just so enthused, honestly, about who you are, how you train the, the potential that you have. And it's funny because I know this from being in the sport coaches, we see potential all the time. Right. Like there are there are a lot of physically talented and gifted athletes out there in the world. And a lot of them see our sport from the outside in. They're like, oh, I think I could do that or I want to do that. But it doesn't excite me as a coach as much as I clearly saw that Justin was excited because you need to have a work ethic and you need to have a maturity about you to actually allow that talent to come to fruition. Right. Or to see the fruits of what you potentially could have. And so when he mentioned those things, I was like, oh, my goodness. OK, so I was watching you execute you know, throughout the Granite Games last year. And my first question within this topic to you is when you were there, did you have the expectation like, hey, before the event started, I'm going to the CrossFit Games this year. Okay. You know, 2022 is my my debut. No. And uh, why not? I'm sure you might might have heard this. I've been asked this question a lot. Um, it's just like a maybe because I have been so loose with the pressure on myself with a timeline I hated the idea of letting myself down with like a false expectation or an unrealistic mm. goal or expectation. So um, we started training um, that. So Justin took me on at the end of the games in 2021. So we had that was our first full season together. Um, and we had spoken early that year, like kind of like right at the start, like, hey, like, what are our goals? Like, what are some timelines? And like, and something I really appreciate about, appreciate about Justin is like, he's very realistic and he's not going to just like pump your tires for no reason. He's not going to tell you that you're going to make it to the games this year if he doesn't think so. And um, our original conversation was like, well, I made, I was 16th at West Coast Classic, like semifinals. Like my goals are obviously to improve upon that, but like, I don't know if I have the capacity for the games this year. Like I still have these holes like X, Y, Z. And um, he like, that's pretty much what he said as well. And I was just like, let's like, he's like, I think it's going to happen for you. Like, I don't, like, I think you will make it to the games. I just don't know if it's this year. And so I mm. kind of took that whole year as like, put my head down, keep working. And um, like you get your ass handed to you by Danielle and like all these athletes. So you don't know how good you are relative to the field. Right. I just knew how good I was relative to the top, like 10 fittest women, like, um, and there's definitely a big difference between top 10 and bottom 10 at the games. Like there's just like that next caliber. Um, and so going into Granite games, like I knew I had been a lot better and I did well in quarterfinals, but, um, I still didn't know, like, I didn't know if that was enough and I didn't expect by any means, like, to make it and obviously like after day one like when you're in the in the spot then you're like oh like okay like I want it like I didn't let myself want it before um mm. because I didn't want to be disappointed and I didn't want to let myself down or anyone else down that I had ran around I'm gonna make it to the games like I just didn't want that um but once I knew I had a fighting chance then like my competitive edge kicked in and I was like I want to go to the games <laughs> That's so cool. And I, and I think there's, you know, a, a really unique perspective that you're bringing there to the table. And again, because some athletes choose to have the opposite view. They're like, Hey, I made it to semifinals. I'm going to the CrossFit games this next year, you know, or, or, or have that killer mindset of like, Hey, it's first for me or, or I'm, you know, I've failed this year. Right. Uh -huh. And I think there's a, a really fine balance again, in having perspective on, focusing on you and your execution and really optimizing what you bring to the table. And if you can optimize what you bring to the table and then you get an opportunity to find out if you're fit enough, 
yeah. right? And then and then that's you versus the field or you versus the test within our sport because that's another unique challenge is that the test is always shifting and always evolving and forever changing, which you know is what drew a lot of us in to begin with and what certainly keeps me excited and um, interested within our sport. Um, but you, you mentioned that. And so you, you get excited. You're like, Hey, I, I'm allowing myself to want this. Uh, nothing was official of course, until that final workout had come and gone, which, uh, running and climbing, uh, two things that you, you did pretty darn well within that legless rope climb event Were you, what was, what was the experience like for you, uh, getting ready to, to take the floor, be in those corrals before you, you took the competition floor for that final at Granite Games? Um, it was really nice not to be like I wasn't nervous and that was such a fun feeling um obviously like some of the events that weekend were just grueling like not fun awful like question why you do this kind of events um and I had made it through all those and I like legless rope climbs and like sure your heart rate might spike for a second but it's not a Fran workout it's not like really the only thing that's going to happen is your arms are going to get tired. Um, so there was no need to be nervous from like a physiological standpoint, like that, like, Oh, this is going to hurt. Like you don't have that. And I knew that, um, I didn't know like how good everyone else was in the field. I just knew that I was good at that movement. So, um, it was just kind of an opportunity to have fun and it being the last event, like there's nothing else afterwards. Like, it was just a really cool opportunity to like just go for it and enjoy the moment. That's so cool. And you would go on to, of course, punch a ticket to the CrossFit Games and make your rookie debut there. And and there's a lot of things that we could unpack and unfold um, through your rookie experience. But the thing that I am really curious about with you, Alex, as we're here, even on the brink of semis uh, in 2023, is that you know you you realize the dream that some people will never actually accomplish right getting to the competition floor mm -hmm. but what it seems is that when you get there something flips and there's a switch that is flipped and it changes the way that you perceive yourself changes the way that you perceive kind of the sport what what did making it and then then concluding a season and having that experience under your belt do for your perspectives in 2023 yeah um going into the games i was really nervous that Maybe it wasn't going to be everything that I had hoped and training mm. really hard leading up to it. And I was like, maybe I'll be one and done. Like, maybe I'll compete and realize it wasn't for me. And um, I'm really thankful that that wasn't the case. I finished and got really excited and wanted to go back to training way like quicker than I could or wanted to. Um, and I don't know. I feel like, make, like going is just like such a cool experience that, um, you just realize you're so lucky to be a part of and if you have the opportunity to continue to have that opportunity again then like definitely something I wanted to pursue um, as far as like changing my mindset and going into this season um, still just working on like hey trust the fitness that you have and like don't mm. be afraid to like use it um, just like working on like sending it if you will more often than not um rather than pacing and being calculated just taking more risks um yeah and like now obviously like i've had enough finishes and um where like i'll see numbers and i'm like okay like it's not a coincidence anymore it's not like i can't just mm. blame, i can't just blame the program i mean i can't um say it was a fluke like I have to start trusting it so now I'm at a place where like I do trust that I'm fit and I just need to continue to build on that yeah it's a, and it's a beautiful thing as a competitor when you come to that realization right and you mentioned this even kind of like as we were chatting about the the general mentality and mindset there at underdogs throughout this course of the season it's like hey I'm aware that there's 10 spots available to go to the CrossFit Games out of the West and internally at this point because you've been now you probably feel a sense of ownership of one of those spots mm -hmm. and i think it's with good validation and you should approach the competition floor with certainly different expectations and and of course new excitement about um what you're capable of because you've, you've proven it to yourself now not just through last year but also through the beginning stages of this year and uh the the place that you find yourself sitting in now um what are your thoughts so far on the programming and some of the shift in regards to skills and drills that we've been exposed to so far in 2023? And does that, 
does that make you any more excited or nervous about semis? Unpopular opinion. I like it. I like the, um, I like the twists and the turns. I think naturally, like I'm a pretty good athlete in the sense of like, I can pick things up relatively quickly. Um, I'm not a gymnast by any means, but like I was able to figure out ring muscle ups and figure out handstand walking and, um, figure out that stuff relatively quickly to other people. And I'm not saying this in like a, I'm cool kind of way, just like a, in a realistic approach, like I'm good at picking up new skills. Um, so I like when we get thrown new things and, um, I also like, and I'm just gonna use the handstand pushups as an example. Sure. I like that Adrian Bosman is making things harder, not for the sake of just making them harder, but for like actually having a movement test what it's supposed to test. Like I hate keeping handstand pushups mainly because I'm bad at that. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> so I don't like them, but I also, they hurt, like they hurt my neck. I don't think they're a good shoulder exercise. You're just like, it's who can fling your body around really well for a long time. And other people might disagree and that's okay. Um, but I really like just his approach of like, I feel like he's really methodical in what he's doing. Um, mm. And he's really trying to like both test and showcase the athletes. Whereas I think before it was kind of more like who can be tough. And that's also a test. And there's going to be tests like that, obviously that come across and are important. Um, but I feel like maybe Dave's approach was always like, how can we make this hard? Like, how can we just make this like awful? And I feel like Adrian's a little more like, okay, who can do this? Like who can, like who has the best shoulder stamina? Who who's strong in this setting, not just a one rep max? Mm. Like, and I appreciate that. And I think it definitely like we're all on our toes now. It is unknown and changing and variable, and I think that's cool. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed the the process. Um, you know, even get an opportunity to sit down with Boz and discuss his kind of mindset mentality around some of the testing that has existed. Have you watched the run the test series that CrossFit has put out? Yeah, yeah. I love it. You, I think it's oh really my good. gosh. It's yes. It's some of my favorite content that exists. And of course there's a couple different perspectives that I get to see it from as an analyst for the sport podcast host and, and I, and I still coach as well. It's like, oh man, that's the, that's my favorite opportunity yeah. to nerd out and geek out on yeah. some of the old articles that exist and what make our sport. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, what do you think of all the new stuff? Do you like it? Oh, I love it. I, I, I really do love it. And I think it presents a challenge to me, both as a coach and an athlete that I appreciate because it, again, it, a lot of times what we perceive as fitness isn't necessarily what CrossFit is as fitness. And we need to be reminded um, about the emphasis on skills and drills and basic gymnastics progressions and learning how to teach those and progress athletes through those, those structured components. So I, I love it because of that. Um, I, but I like to, you know, I like to be pushed a little bit and I like to be, um, you know, challenged. And I think it's, it's doing it in the right way. Cause I do agree that there was a time where it seemed as though to progress our sport, you just had to become tougher and you had to become more durable and you had to become uh, stronger and faster. And now it's like, we're starting to veer towards this perspective of, okay, where are your skills and drills? Where's your freestanding handstand hold? Can you else it for three minutes straight? How many times can you go up and down this rope without letting your feet touch the ground though? You know, like there, you know, it's, 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 it's a different thing that we've got to be mindful of. And I think it's really fun. Um, and I do understand still on the other side, how it's a hard pill for some people to swallow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm saying this from a place of like being able to do those skills. I'm sure if like for the crossovers, if you couldn't get them and you just couldn't like, then you're just standing there and unable to do the workout. So definitely I'm sure there's some unhappy people. Um, but I think like there's a growing pains with any change and people will get over it. <laughs> you know it, you know it. Uh, um, ups have been humbling me since their appearance. I'll just let people know. Justin's been programming them and we had a workout on uh, Monday or sorry, Tuesday. And there were some heavy dumbbells. So we had like heavy devil's press heavy overhead lunge and then there was toes to bar and v-ups so like each round you had a round of toes to bar and a round of v-ups and um being a stronger athlete like i would make up a lot of ground on the um dumbbells like i'd get ahead and i'd like look around like okay i'm looking i'm ahead i'm doing good by the last round i thought i was about to lose by like minutes because i was like dying on the v-ups just v-up splat v -ups, just 
laying there. They're so hard. Yeah, they're, they're humbling. And I, and I appreciate that new movement. I know it brought a lot of complication in regards to standards and judging. However, it was, um, again, something that kind of had been just sitting there off to the side. We use it as sometimes a training stimulus, but to be able to test it now, just think about how many thousands of athletes are executing these V-ups and trying to get better at them across the world. So I think, again, that almost just shows the value of kind of expounding the test and making it more broad. Um, but Alex, I'd be remiss if I didn't get to ask you something that, of course, didn't involve your training and fitness. What is the favorite thing that you like to do that has nothing to do with CrossFit? Um. If I, I always joke about this. If I didn't do CrossFit for fitness, I'd probably want to like just dance, like go to dance studios and do that. Um, that's something I enjoy. I told, as I mentioned earlier, like with Jake, like once I'm done competing, like I want to go hike more and go adventure more. Um, right now, like while I'm in the season of life, when I have free time, I like to read um, mostly just like fiction books. I'm like a romance novel geek. Uh, <laughs> is there is there one particular that you're in the middle of or just finished um actually i need to go i need to go book shopping i haven't read in the past couple weeks because i haven't gone and got a book um i just finished a series though that i really liked it's called a court of thorns and roses i pretty much pushed that on all my friends <laughs> um but yeah uh reading um i'm honestly okay with doing nothing like during this season when I'm tired, like I like to just watch a show or chill or I like board games. Uh, something that is special about our camp that I really appreciate is we'll have like game nights. So the past couple Sundays we've stayed after training and we've been playing this game called blood on the clock tower. And it's okay. like a, it's like a murder mystery mafia style game. And so everyone has like a character. No one else knows who your character is except for you. And yes. every night, like the there's like a demon or like a murderer and every night like they kill someone and you're like your eyes are closed when this happens like they kill someone then you wake up everyone like gets to talk and you're trying to like narrow out who the bad people are it's so fun and it takes like two hours and we oh i could play it like every night it's so fun it's funny i think we play that same format of a game and we call it like werewolf or something like that oh like, yeah so it's like the same format someone in the group is a werewolf uh, this is something that we've often played like during our, during our summer vacations as a family and stuff. So I, I, I get it. I, I get the draw yeah. and I too enjoy anything that kind of, you know, takes my brain and focus away from competing, especially when I had my athlete shoes on, uh, and was really focused on trying to get back to the games or take a team to the, to the top of the podium. So I know how that is. It's nice to find relief, yeah. um, and, and kind of escape that way. Well, I've got five quick hitter questions for you that I ask everybody on the podcast, Alex. So. Right. I'll start sending them your way. Now, question number one is um, what's the most memorable open workout for you in your career so far? And can you describe it? Um, honestly, my first open, uh, it was 20, it would have been 2018. And it was like the toes to bar dumbbell hang clean and jerk and rowing workout. And yeah. The only reason I've like, it was so memorable. I can just like vividly picture like, who I was with, like the music that was on, pretty much just everything about it. I remember very vividly. And I remember I did singles on my toes to bar because I couldn't kip them at the time. I love it. Yeah, that was definitely like a very memorable thing for me. I remember like always being so excited to get to the five o'clock class. And so like I was there and like all my gym friends are there and that would be my first yeah, I, I like that. And that's that's a that's a pretty good introduction to the open, right? Because it's like a longer workout. It wasn't anything like 21, 15, 9 dress or pull up, you know. Um, so that's that's a that's a pretty good and favorable memory. Uh, some of the other guests I've had on the, their memories weren't so positive the way uh, that you express yours. So. <laughs> yeah, I forget, I forget the bad ones. Hey, yeah, that's that's wise and, and intelligent there. Um, if you are DJ in the gym or you're maybe if you're on one of your monostructural pieces what's playing in the speakers if there's music on uh if i'm like about to do like a qualifier or a workout or i'm at the gym then like i'd prefer like a missy elliott style playlist um when i do monostructural music uh in the morning i mostly just listen to some jesus like worship music and that's a time for me to just kind of reflect and remember that like i get to do what i do and um that's what I usually listen to in the morning. I love it. That's a great way to start your day with some good gratitude and appreciation. Um, 
Question number three, if you could remove one movement mm. from the CrossFit methodology, let's just say it could be semifinals coming up. You're like, there's one movement. I don't want it to appear there because it's going to help me if it's not there. What movement is it? Mm. I hate like saying this because it's getting a lot better, but I still don't love a heavy barbell snatch. Um, okay. Or actually here, that's what, oh man. Yeah, probably that. Yeah, it's and it could be ever changing, right? Yeah. So it'll always evolve. But if you say just a heavy barbell in the form of a specifically a snatch, then that'd be that's all right. Yeah. I, I I would actually agree for me as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not an event that would make me take dead last in a particular competition or anything like that. But just from a preference standpoint, I'm like, nah, you could. Yeah. I wonder if max snatch is going to be one of the higher stress levels that I experience. Yep. So I'd rather not. Yep. <laughs> I get it. Um, this is listen. You're young and you have haven't really been involved in the space too long, but if I could throw this question your way, I want you to consider it. What type of impact um, would you, would you like to leave on the CrossFit community if you've ever even considered it yet? That's a good question. Um, I feel like maybe just staying true to who you are um, is a big one for me. Um, and that's something I'm trying to live out by continuing to be a part of the gym community and mm continue to like be involved in things outside of CrossFit and um, not let social media change who you are just to get XYZ. Um, yeah, probably that. Awesome. Great response. And then lastly, uh, folks out there that are fans of our sport, um, perhaps this could be some of your family members that see you doing your fitness at a very high level. And they're like, you know, that's great for you, Alex, but you're an elite athlete and you have an extraordinary ability and I'm not that, and I don't have those things to people that are intimidated by CrossFit or the way that we train, what would you say to encourage them to try it out or to walk through the doors at an affiliate? Um, I always tell people that what I do is I actually just say it's not healthy. <laughs> and I, sure. I try to explain to them that like I'm on the extreme end and mm -hmm. I'm to compete, not to be healthy. And, um, you can go to a class and you don't have to do ring muscle ups. You don't have to do GHG sit ups. Um, the idea is just to move your body in a lot of different ways. And um, I usually, I mean, you just have to tell people, just give it a shot, just try it. Yeah. Um, but usually I'm not very successful at my pitches. So maybe I need to change. <laughs> no, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head. And I would agree. Most of the guests, you know, after they say, what they would say for like a sentence or two, they just come back to around like, you know, I would probably just end up telling them to go give it a try. And like, what do they have to lose? You know, because it's, it's an hour of your time. You're probably going to meet some really cool people. Um, and if you don't like it, you just leave. Yep. Yep. So that's the message. Go try CrossFit folks. If you are hesitant at all, or you don't know what it entails, or you're confused about this discussion that you just heard between Alex and I go, go to a local affiliate and give it a try. Um, because I'm almost guaranteeing that you'll have a good time and enjoy the experience. But Alex, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to hop on this more than fitness podcast with me today. Um, it's, it's been an illuminating experience just to learn more about you as an individual, your life, your beginning journeys of, of CrossFit. Um, and you know, if it's something you choose to do, uh, hopefully we'll be having conversations like this for, for the, you know, competitive years in your future to come. Um, but good luck for the rest of the 2023 season. And, uh, Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in and listening to this interview. Yeah. Um, Alex. Having me. Thank you. It was a blast. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I will see you somewhere uh, at the West at the West Coast semifinal. Yeah. Oh, sweet. You'll be there then. Awesome. I'll be there. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.